back to it. So, I first got into like spiritual stuff when I checked out this book called Miyamoto Musashi's Book of Five Rings. And I was like, huh. And I, at the time, like, I I had this way of learning. I was like, huh. That's hilarious. Running things, which is basically, like, I'd look at something, and then I kind of, like, just keep looking at it. True. I'm, not, I'm not really thinking. And no thinking to do, actually. Kind of playing it down a bit. Like, I just have this, like, feeling that there's, like, more, more to get. And then eventually that more to get feeling goes away, and I understand it. It's true. I, it's just like, I was like, ah, like a thing that I haven't uh, integrated yet. And then I just kind of go like this. I'm like, ah, I get it completely now. <laughs> um, that's kind of just always how I've operated. It's like, oh, I need to like understand something. Let me just fucking bring my attention to it. Yeah, oh, I get it now. Yeah, pretty much. And I did that with me and Murder Mystery. Bring, bring my attention to it, though. It's like, who? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, sure, like, that's the, that's how you have to put it. That's how you have to put it, because you're a human being, but, like, I, you know, also, also, no. Look at five rings, um, and I was like, huh, it's like, no matter how long I look at this, it's like, it's not really, uh, it's not, like, absorbing. <laughs> yeah. Weird. That's weird. Um, it must be, like, I don't know, this might be, this must have some depth to it. This is really interesting. And it just kind of caught my curiosity in, like, a really, uh, fun way. Where I kept coming back to it, like, I, I'd be like, ah, oh, let me go look at the Book of Five Rings for a few more, like, minutes. <laughs> I'd be just, like, chilling. I'm like, ah. Oh. Like, hey, that Book of Five Rings, like, it was, like, on a website. So I was like, oh, I'll just go fucking check it out again. Like, and I just, like, stare at, like, a few lines. I'd be like, huh. Feels like, feels like something's happening. <laughs> I think that was really my, like, that was my actual introduction to the spiritual path and like everything that came after was a consequence of that in my experience um if i want to put it like really honestly i think that like at the moment that i connected in like that i became enlightened in the future and it's been rippling back since but it was like ah oh, like this thing like it's just interesting it's just fun it's like and no matter how much i look at it it's like there's something like bringing me back to it which is just really cool so sure. that was my introduction and then I found um, a few more spiritual books. I was really vague, and it was like uh, a cartel part of now. It was like I had all these quotes from like Zen masters and stuff. It was like ah, write your own book, Eckhart. Oh, I just steal a bunch of book quotes. <laughs> you know, if you if you observe the observer, you enter a new state of consciousness. And I was like, oh, sounds like fun. I'll try it. Um, so I like kind of went like this. I did kind of like the absorb, the absorb thing. Kind of did it like inwardly. And, um, that's yeah worth thinking about what I just said there for like a long time. I was just like basically stumbling around outside. I was like, man, like, oh, fucked up. And I look up at this <laughs> list. Like everything becomes like mega beautiful all at once. Yeah. It's like, vzz, yeah. And I just like fell on the floor in the pouring rain. And I was just like, I was just looking at all this like a uh, incredible like a beauty. It was, it was nighttime by the way. So like there was just the lamppost light and it was like orange light and like lots of water. It was really beautiful. When I was getting like slammed in the face by water. Uh, and eventually I got back up. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, huh, okay, I'll just go back inside, I guess. And then the next, like, two days, or the, maybe the next morning. Yeah, the next morning, I, like, when I woke up, I, like, went to bed, and then when I woke up, I, there was, like, my experience was just, like, really smooth, and I was just kind of, like, doing everything that I wanted. Um, And I had, like, a really, like, free, like, casual air about me. It's, like, a bunch of, like, um, like, a bunch of, like, uh, conceptions about how the world worked. I, I was, like, going shopping. And then, like, I walked past this store that sold clothes, and I was like, ha ha, I'm just gonna go in for fun. And I, like, had a really nice conversation with the, like, cashier woman. And I, like, bought some shirts. And I left the store. And it was, like, before that moment, like, I don't think I ever, like, even talked to a woman before. Like, out of the blue. And I was just super, like, fucking, like, zero anxiety. 
Um, so yeah, I think I might have like blown out anxiety like in that first like big experience. I just didn't have anxiety anymore. We're like gone. And that lasted for about, you know, half the day. And then I kind of s switched back more into like a more normal mode, more like human mode. Uh, I remember I was like, I was like, damn, like what the, f like, I, I, I think I had like no thoughts, like that whole, like first, I had like three quarters of a day, like no thoughts, like just acting, or if you want to call it like that, um, enlightened, like being. And then I like, came out of it and I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> because I, I think I like realized that I was in that mode. And then by realizing I was in that mode, it pulled me out of the mode. Uh, you know, where this, things are tough and confusing and hard. It's like whenever you want to make something stable, like you notice something, you're like, oh, I want to make that stable. Like, that's mine. Like, this is my mode now. Like, it's just gone. And like, ever since then, I've been experiencing like... Like three to seven times per day, like I'll have like a loss of control of my body, similar to like falling on the floor. So like I can like lose control of like my whole body. I can like just kind of not be able to move like this, but I wouldn't be like this. Like we're just slightly different. Like it's different. Like losing control like that and like being able to stay still like this. So sometimes it's like a mind kind of loss of control. And sometimes it's like a full body loss of control. And sometimes I just like, like I'll just be out walking and I'll just like keep walking in the same direction. But I've like, I'm like, no one's there. So I'm just like walking and like conscious, but like nothing's happening for me. And I like, I'll like hit a wall and I'll do like a Roomba thing where I'll just like slowly turn to get past it or like keep walking into it. So it's like a bunch of different ways that I have this strange experience where like I just get a bunch of insight, but a little less violent. Um, and I'll have some kind of like Kundalini movement. So like some kind of energetic movement in my body. I, I have energy like all the time. People people are like, yeah, like I had Kundalini like once. It's like, what? I have energy. All the, I'm always moving energy in my body. Like going like this. But like shift something in my heart. And like move something in my sacral chakra. And if I'm like, I don't know, like. Like that's like moving a bunch of stuff in my third eye. Like to be better. And like, so when I'm just like moving around normally, I'm like having energetic movements. And it's been like that for fucking ever. Not like the, the fluency and being able to move it when I want, but like my path has just been basically just feeling energy in my body like all the time, like just all the time. I have like 24 seven awareness of like energy in my body. Kindly. I mean, the Kundalini, I don't really believe in it. it, but yeah, I have some kind of energetic movement in my body. Um, and then there'd be some kind of shift uh, where everything changes for me in like an instant. And then when I get out of that, I'll be like a different person. So I guess just an example is like I, uh, you know, like one, t one time, like this is like a recent one. I was like lying sideways and then all of a sudden the perception of orientation of me being sideways just disappeared. And then like when I stood up or if I was sideways, it like felt the same. Another time, like, I was, like, constructing, I don't know, like, objects like this, like, as an object, and it's just gone. And now, like, when I look at it, I don't get my eyes on it like an object. It's just, like, I don't know how to put it. There's just vision. There's no, like, thing here that I'm looking at. Um, other stuff, you know, plenty, plenty of other stuff, like, losing the sense of self, like, the sense of self just, like, going. And then it's just, like, a person walking, like, the body's walking itself. Or like the observer like going away in some fashion. Or like basically just like it's impermanence. It's like things that I think are stable are now Im unstable. It, permanent things are now impermanent. Like I things become more aut automatic, empty, selfless. Like the beings become less obviously like not the case. Become more obviously not the case. But yeah. It's just like uh it's just insight. It's just the same kind of insight you get from insight meditation, I think. And my perception would be completely different. Uh, and you know, there's varying varying degrees of uh, power associated with those kind of events. Um, I'm I'm on the insight path, so you know, like the in, like Daniel Ingham does this insight path where there's like different parts at different stages, like different. It's like stronger or weaker, basically. Kind of, I'm on that all the time, but they happen often. Uh, it's still happening now. And my 
path has basically been like I had about seven years of debt. Um, like that thing I did, and then I like, like that, whatever. Like, with, like, my eyes moved separately to my head. I in this like week of like ramping up the power of like those things where I kind of like lose control and then like. Yeah, I went to go hang out at my girlfriend's house, um, and I was having like the biggest fucking like full body convulsions, like full body convulsions, and it would be like mega violent. Like I'd be like smashing shit if it was around me, basically. Um. Yeah, and I just got fucking mega enlightened over that week. Like I, had, I went through so many massive shifts, and at one point it just was like, and all the suffering and my perception just went away. And I was like, ah, I'm enlightened, and I just started writing down the time eleven eleven forty two on the fourteenth of November. No, fucking November, December. What month is it? Yeah, it is November. Yeah, fourteen November. Okay, trust the old, trust the old noggin. They sometimes come back it in. Come back it in. What? And it culminated in this like week of like ramping up the power of like those things where I kind of like lose control and then like come back it in. Um and this thing where I was that I was doing where I was like connecting to Miyamoto Musashi or the work or anything, and then like Miyamoto Musashi. Like absorbing it back in. I figured out that I could I could do that to like trees, I could do that to like art, I could yeah. do that to people. I can so like I, I've talked about my alignment thing now. That's all over, and now I'm talking about my energy thing. Like I've been slowly cultivating this energy ability where I connect to stuff and absorb the power. And it's like I was doing it to like loads of different shit. I did that to stuff I was reading, and what I'm actually doing is I'm shifting into the energetic space of the thing, uh, and I'm kind of like absorbing the energy into my body, so I can like if I'm talking to someone. I can shift into the energetic space and like take things that they've like learned or I say take copy. I copy it. I'm like, ah, like that's an interesting like little setup that you have where you like that's the way you perceive this thing and that's how you like handle this particular like energetic movement. Like I'll do that too. So I really like talking to new people. <laughs> like understand like the way they perceive the world. And I can just use them for myself, like from then on. Um you know, I can I can absorb a lot from pretty much anyone or anything. It's so interesting how you can tell my hands are like disconnected from the rest of what I'm like saying. Like my eyes, my eyes, my hands, and my like body are like disconnected. Like, like they're not operated by one being, and you can just tell. Like I learned like a bunch of Egyptian magic from just reading Egyptian texts, and it's the same thing with like, everything that I that I like uh, try and consume. I kind of do it with this energetic process. Well, who's like hum, hum. it's fine now? Yeah. Um, so it's very low effort. <laughs> so I pretty much spent like what am I seven at? years kind of just uh, getting these like insight booms where I just like lose control of my body and come back and I have like yep. more insight into reality and I'm like a different person and my perception is different. Uh, very different. Like it's scary. People get scared. And also like doing this energetic connection thing. So, like, my energetic connection thing um, is kind of like a skill that I accidentally cultivated for a bunch of years. I thought I was learning. I thought I was like, oh, this is how people learn. They just look at stuff and then they absorb the energy of it and then they know it. But that's not how people learn, I think. Maybe it is. It's how I've, like, um, how I've pretty much navigated the world the whole time. Um, but it, what it means is now, at this point, if I'm, like, talking to someone... I can just connect to their energetic system and I can see everything that's going on. I just know everything that's going on. So I know if they have a block in their heart chakra, I know if they have a block in their like sacral, I know how the system's set up. I, I, I ask for consent, but sometimes I just get like fucking, I just know stuff. That just happens. When you're in line, you just know a bunch of shit and like it's not in your head, but you just like say it. You're like, oh, you five years ago you had an exact accident. And they're like, oh yeah, how'd you do it? And you're like, just happens. I know, like, if they're afraid, like, there's a bunch of different emotional chakras, and I can detect all of those happening as well. Um, and then by knowing that, I can then tell people, like, hey, you, th there's a thing that you're missing here, there's a blind spot here, and you can solve that by doing this thing. Um, so the, the disadvantage of that is that when I'm telling them that, I'm feeling their feelings in my body at the same time. So if they have like a blocked heart chakra, it's like I have a blocked heart chakra at the same time. It's like, ha! Ah. Until like their energy leaves my system. 
So it's like very physically demanding. Um, yeah, pretty much. So yeah, I got enlightened. Yeah, and uh, since oh. then I was like, hey, <laughs> now that I'm enlightened, I'm allowed to teach because <laughs> that's how that's how the Zen teachers did it. The, the Chinese Zen teachers, Chan teachers, they're like, if you're not enlightened, why are you teaching? Like, stop being a fucking idiot. But they might have been just been trying to get more students, but they're also right, kind of. It's like, once you're enlightened, then you're good. Yeah. And you can tell people about it. True. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Also, Banka Yotaku's spirit visited me, like, and told me I was in his lineage. And I was like, ah, great. Um, and that's pretty much it, yeah. So, like, I'm... I'm Hanjo. I have energy powers. Don't tell anyone. I use it to navigate my life. Don't tell people I'm that. I'm enlightened. Keep that yeah. quiet. Keep that quiet, everyone. That's a secret between me and you. Do not, do not tell people about that. All right.